हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्ण जय पावन हरि नाम संकीर्तन के हृदय गौर प्रेमानंदे ओम ज्ञान तमिरांध से ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुवन मेलित तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोवेष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाति स्वदाकम वंदेह श्रीगुरो श्रीयुतापदकमल 
ಶ್ರೀಗುರುನ್ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪಂ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹ ಗಣರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾಧೂತ ಪರಜನ ಸವಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸಹ ಗಣಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣೆ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮೇ ಗೌರತ್ವಿಷೇ ನಮಃ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ್ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೀ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ಕೃಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗಾಧರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಷ್ಟ್ರೇಷು ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತ್ಯುತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಠಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ದೇವಕೀ ನಂದನಾಯ ನಂದಗೋಪಕುಮಾರಾಯ ಗೋವಿಂದಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ಯೂತ್ and especially for people living in this age because this age is age of kali kali yuga so how maharaj parikshit received the age of kali that is this chapter actually 17th chapter it's a very very important chapter for those who want to safeguard themselves from the uh, this sub chapter 16 yeah chapter 16 mm. first canto chapter 16 so i will summarize what we uh, were discussing from this chapter in a very short time mm.
as you know uh, after lord krishna left for his own abode maharaj parikshit was ruling this world maharaj parikshit being the descendant of pandavas grandson of pandavas was a very righteous king very pure soul in fact parikshit is glorified in the bhagavatam so much that in his mother's womb and lord krishna personally entered and protected him isn't it so he's called as vishnu rath so his birth is very glorious and maharaj's death maharaj parikshit's death is also very glorious why anybody knows why huh? how did he leave his body at the end by hearing shrimad bhagavatam for seven continuous days huh? and then he ascended to vaikuntha and he got purified so by hearing about how he heard the shrimad bhagavatam and at that time of his death and he left the body so that is also very glorious and uh, his life is also very glorious while living because he always lived in a very krishna conscious way hmm? very pure life in fact parishit maharaj's uh, qualities are mentioned in the previous chapter with the Bra- by the brahmanas who say how he will be glorious like prahlad glorious like ranti dev glorious like shiva glorious like mount meru huh? Glor- and, uh, and all good qualities <coughs> practically over a dozen wonderful good qualities of prahlad uh, qualities of parikshit are mentioned in the previous chapter <coughs> and uh, you see maharaj is hearing all the good qualities of parikshit and now the parikshit is ruling the world now hmm? how he was wonderfully ruling hmm? is explained here one day when parikshit was on his way to conquer the world he decided hmm? why <coughs> there were also other kings who were religious kings huh? whom parikshit wanted to subdue and make them subordinate and then they will have to obey what parikshit would say and what would parikshit tell them naturally he would tell them to follow the religious principles and they have to pay tax to the king <laughs> and some of the kings were very uh, happy to be under the rule of parikshit so they were willing to pay tax and be lorded over by parikshit maharaj they immediately surrendered without any hesitation they said he is a krishna's devotee he is a pure soul and uh, he is teaching us how to guy how to run our kingdom let us just submit to him and cooperate with him hmm? they would do that in this way he was going uh, suddenly he saw in one place uh, there was a, a shudra low class shudra uh, beating and hurting the legs of a bull and a cow hmm? and immediately the king caught hold of him and wanted to deal with him offering him a punishment See, like this, Sutta Goswami is telling to uh, Shavanaka the Rishis. Hmm. <coughs> Prabhu is saying here in the purport, the age of Kali means mismanagement and quarrel. And the root, root cause of all mismanagement and quarrel is that worthless men, uh, with the modes of lower class men like Tamaguna, Rajoguna men, who have no higher ambition in life, they come to the helm of state management, he says. People who are in post, Uh, if they are sh- low class shudras huh? then they will also uh, do these things like beating a cow and bull means the bull represents dharma and destroying dharma and the cow represents the earth huh? which means uh, torturing the people of the earth that's the meaning exploiting the people of the earth in that verse uh, in the 12th canto of bhagavatam and that's the verse which says that the kings in kaliyuga will be uh, thieves huh? they will loot the public it says so when he observed it you see shanaka rishis are asking why did maharaj parikshit simply punish him since he was the lowest of the shudras although he was dressed up like a king and if he is striking cow with a leg how did he not kill him they are asking how can somebody beat a cow cow is the emblem of you know worship all worship everybody worships cow is one of the mother seven mothers he should have killed him at once why was he delaying they are asking in those days if you beat a cow you will be killed on the spot can you imagine now how many millions of cows are being killed in this age you can see and then they are saying shonaka rishis are telling sutta goswami please tell us this past time only if it is in relation to krishna otherwise don't disturb our minds they are saying because we don't want to hear about any such thing that somebody is beating a cow what kind of story are you telling huh? 
you know if somebody better cow immediately they should be killed on the spot huh? like that hmm? and they say the devotees of the lord are accustomed to licking the honey available from the lotus feet of the lord what is the use of topics which simply waste one's valuable life they are asking huh? and then of course sutta goswami is not going to speak some prajalpa huh? he is surely going to talk about krishna but he is telling the actual situation hmm? and he was telling hmm? they said how can there be such danger for innocent creatures in kali yuga like the cow huh? and they and they are saying as long as yamaraj who causes everyone's death is present here no one shall meet with death the great sages have invited the controller of death yamaraj who is a representative of the lord and living beings who are under his grip should take advantage by hearing the deathless nectar in the form of shrimad bhagavatam past times of the lord yeah you see this this fact comes in the beginning of bhagavatam that uh, many many things happen one is the demigods come and say that you know we will give amrit and in return please give us a bhagavatam class hmm. and chuga yeah and chuga dev goswami becomes upset he tells uh, all the people that uh, uh, drive these people out of the compound wall hmm. he says why they are trying to purchase bhagavatam with this uh, with amrit of this heaven Uh, because they think the amrit is so valuable that it can be considered equivalent to bhagavatam hmm. bhagavatam is immortal nectar uh, even after drinking amrit the devatas were afraid of agasura hmm. when agasura was opening his mouth and all the covered boys were going in huh? the devatas were very afraid huh? because they thought that we may we may be eaten by agasura although they were all in the clouds in the sky hmm. Whereas the covered boys were dancing their way into Agasura's mouth, isn't it? Without any fear, although they never drank nectar, you see. So by drinking nectar, you don't become fearless, huh? although your uh, lifespan can be extended. Uh, so these demigods uh, uh, were taught by Shukde Goswami that don't compare this immortal nectar of Shrimad Bhagavatam with your so-called Amrit, which is uh, very much appreciated by you. Huh? it is this, this this is something which is beyond any value bhagavatam hmm? <clears throat> at the same time they invited yamaraj to come for the bhagavatam class hmm? and yamaraj was also given diksha initiated also and made to sit in the class chup chap keep quiet huh? <laughs> don't uh, don't go around killing everybody hmm? so because as long as yamaraj is hearing bhagavatam there is no tension of any death for anybody like that he is saying hmm? so even those who are hearing bhagavatam they also have no fear because at the time of the class no death is going to come huh? because amaraj is also attending the class <laughs> he is busy huh? that they are saying and then he is saying mandasya manda pragnya pragnyasya vayo manda yushascha vai nitriya hrete naktam divacha vyartha karma bihi he is saying the living entities in this age are very lazy hmm? and they have very little intelligence and the duration of life is very short and they pass their whole night simply sleeping and uh, and performing activities during the day working hard for earning money and filling up their belly huh? in this way the living entities in this uh, uh, age are very uh, degraded like that is saying huh? the shonaka rishis are saying like this now sutta ko swami is saying as parikshit was uh, uh, going throughout his empire the symptoms of age of kali began to infiltrate hmm, within the jurisdiction of his state when he learned about this he, he thought it to be not very palatable hmm. but however parikshit maharaj took it as a challenge because chatriyas like fight isn't it he just like you know if somebody likes driving a bike a different different bikes he is trying imagine you bring a new bike and give him hmm, i got a new bike even the uh, smell of the rubber and tire and everything is coming so he will very happily <laughs> now his hands will be itching to drive the bike is it not true because you get into your elements so like we say now we are in our elements elements means you know somebody liking um, bike driving they will want to drive is it similarly chatriya means he likes fight. fight of course he doesn't want to hit anybody just like that but if there is a chance for fight they are very happy when parishit learned the shudra some shudra has wore a crown and he is claiming to be the king Huh? as a uh, opponent to the 
actual king who is Parikshit. Hmm? And uh, of course, Parikshit would face anybody who is pretending to be king, but especially Kaliraj, who is appearing in the form of a Shudra hmm? and is becoming a king. And uh, uh, what is the problem when somebody posing as a king, just like nowadays in market, you see, the original products are all replaced by fake products which appear like the original products. Nowadays they use hologram and all, you know? Correct? Why they use hologram? Do you know that? They put a hologram sticker. Why? Huh? Yeah. Some item is very famous in the market. Many people imitate it. Huh? They also produce something which appears very similar. Huh? Similar type of product. And then afterwards they have to put a hologram and say that if hologram is not there, don't buy or something. But foolish people will anyway buy. They will not know what is the difference between the two. Isn't it? Like we have Reynolds. R-E-Y-N-O-L-D-S. That's Reynolds. Now they have R-E-Y-N-O-L-S. And D is missing. So, and then you buy the pen, you know, it breaks very easily, very quickly. Isn't it? Similarly, Parikshit is a real king. But here, who is posing as a king? Kaliraj. Huh? This Kali, he is posing the, posing as a king uh, and telling all the people he is wearing black colored dress huh? and wearing a crown and declaring himself to be the king and he is beating the cow and the bull. Huh? So Parishit Maharaj took it as a challenge. Huh? Where is that fellow? Let me go and find out. I will not let him continue his wrong business huh? because he is misrepresenting me. And also Mr. Presenting my whole Vamsha Pandavas, huh? great uh, uh, kings, because uh, I was telling you the Reynolds pen. For example, you buy a Reynolds, so-called pen, Reynolds pen, and then you write it, it breaks down. Then what will people criticize? Yeah, they will criticize Reynolds, isn't it? Although the Reynolds pen is very famous for its quality. Huh? So the quality product will become criticized, uh, although the actual product you got is not the one which is quality product. You understand, no? Similarly, he thought, my forefathers are all great righteous kings, Krishna's devotees. Huh? And now, this Kali is coming and ruining their good name. Huh? And also, that is one problem. Another problem is, he may take over and subject all people to suffering. Huh? No king will want to see his people suffering. Praja should be protected. And also, Kali may spread irreligion. Huh? So, we have to protect. It's very important. That was his concern. Huh? So he went on traveling uh, to different places. Maharaj Parikshit then conquered all parts of the earthly planet like Badrashwa, Ketumal, Bharat, Nardan, Kuru, Kimpursha, etc. He went uh, and he said, wherever the king visited, Tatra Tatropa Shinvanaha, Swapurvesha Mahatmana, Pragiyamanam Cha Yashaha, Krishna Mahatmya Suchakam. See, Krishna Mahatmya Suchakam. The people told him how his Grandfathers like Yudhishthira, Arjuna and all of them were very great devotees of Krishna. Huh? They were Mahatmas, pure devotees. And Krishna loved them very intimately. Sneham cha brishni parthanam tesham bhaktim cha keshave. Their bhakti for Keshava was so glorious. And people said, Parikshit, you are fortunate to be born in such a family. And Parikshit was also happy not only by hearing the forefathers' glories, and people told him that you were also protected in the womb of your mother hmm, by Krishna, who saved you from the Brahmastra, hmm, and then he saved your life. In this way, people were all very joyful and uh, very happy, remembering Krishna, remembering Pandavas. Seeing this, the king became very pleased. Anybody who sang such glories, king gave them uh, abundant charity by giving necklaces and clothing. Huh. He was in so much ecstasy and happiness that uh, whether a person was rich or poor, he gave everybody charity. <laughs> he was giving liberally. In this way, he was also seeing many good things on the way. Huh? Also, people told him, Saratya Parashada Sevana Sakya Dautya. They told him, Krishna became Sarati for your grandfather Arjuna. Huh? And he became a Virasana, like carrying a bow and arrow in his hand, many times uh, Krishna uh, would uh, protect. Virasana means one who carries a sword in the hand or a bow and arrow in the hand and protects uh, someone. That is Virasana. Hmm? Dautya means he became a Shanti Dut to your Pandavas hmm? and went to meet Dhritarashtra. 
हिंदे स्निग्धेश पांडुच जगत प्रणति विष्णु ही लव द पांडव सो मच हि मेड दम किंग्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड अंड मेड द होल वर्ल्ड बव डाउन टू दैम द होल वर्ल्ड सैल्यूटेड आल द किंग्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड सैल्यूटेड युअर फोर फादर्स सच इज द ग्लोरी ऑफ युअर फोर फादर्स and uh, when Par- parishit maharaj heard about uh, krishna and his forefathers he became overwhelmed with devotion to the lotus feet of krishna hmm? in this way he was going and then he saying when he was passing he saying now you may hear from me what happened while maharaj parishit was passing his days hearing of the good occupations of his forefathers huh? and being absorbed in thought of them hmm? and then i was telling this section that dharma in the form of a bull was wandering huh? and then he met also the earth in the form of a cow huh? and uh, she was in tears isn't it you remember selling she was in tears and the dharma was asking many questions why are you uh, filled with grief huh? why are you crying like this what happened do you have some internal disease or your relatives have gone away to some far away place all that he said huh? and then said and then asked are you in anxiety because unlawful meat eaters will exploit the earth in future huh? uh, so in this way uh, many questions are being asked by the bull to the cow and cow to the bull also huh? the one important question he asked are you worried that the women and children and old people will be neglected in this age of kali huh? are you lamenting that the brahmanas will become purchased by money minded people money moneyed people huh? and the brahmanas will lose their good intelligence huh? are you worried that the kshatriyas will use their bahubal for exploiting the public hmm? looting the public and exploiting the public huh? are you lamenting because of these things huh? like that is asking hmm. are you lamenting because the general populace does not follow the rules and regulations for eating sleeping drinking mating and all these things people mate with anybody people drink anything huh? liquor shops are opened everywhere hmm? in this way hmm, people have no proper habits of eating sleeping this sleep beyond midnight huh? get up much late in the morning hmm? similarly people eat all kinds of things including they even kill cows huh? they have uh, organized slaughter houses for killing millions of cows so are you lamenting because of these things hmm? atlas is asking or are you lamenting because uh, the supreme personality of god had hari huh? uh, you know as lord krishna uh, he has left his own abode leaving you behind huh? you are feeling separation from krishna are you lamenting because of that hmm? and then bull is asking oh my dear mother cow huh? you are the reservoir of all riches huh? by the call uh, influence of time huh? everything has been taken away from you you appear to be bereft of fortune huh? you appear lamenting crying so the, the bull is asking like this and dharani watch the cow is telling uh, the form of bumi what she is telling uh, oh dharma whatever you inquired is uh, you will come to know whatever you are uh, saying is true hmm? and she is telling actually lord krishna was maintaining all the all your four legs dharma's four legs you know the, what are dharma's four legs mercy mercy truthfulness Yeah. cleanliness and austerities huh? but now i am seeing you your three legs are broken you are standing only on one leg huh? and also yes i am lamenting that that supreme person krishna who was uh, residing on me on earth now he has left his own abode huh? and because of which and then she is telling all the some 40 good qualities of krishna you see huh? satyam shaucham daya kshanti tyaga santosha arjavam shama dama tapah uh, samyam titiksha uh, like that 40 qualities she is telling she is telling lord has all these good qualities uh, truthfulness cleanliness intolerance of another's unhappiness the power to control anger self satisfaction straightforwardness steadiness of mind control of sense organs responsibility equality tolerance equanimity faithfulness knowledge like that for the qualities she is telling the lord endowed with all these qualities huh? now he has left the face of earth hmm? in his absence the age of kali has spread its influence everywhere so i am sorry to see this condition of existence huh? she is telling this is my uh, lamentation and i am thinking about myself also 
and she is telling and I am thinking of you also she is telling see I am earth and you are dharma we both are suffering I am also suffering and you are also suffering and all the devotees of the Lord are suffering and all the devatas are suffering again and we are finding that all of them are obedient to the Lord now uh, have to live in this age of Kali which is a very dangerous age it's like the age of acidic rain huh? imagine when you are walking on the road and there is acid rain you, what will you do? will you say that what to do if there is a rain? what will you do? you need umbrella yeah. you need umbrella to protect yourself huh? even in the age of Kali Yuga where, where the age is not very favorable for religious principles one should protect oneself that's why the chapter is mentioned here huh? Yeah, in this way she goes on in the 16th chapter and then in the 17th chapter the punishment and reward of Kali that was the chapter from where I was reading so as Parishit proceeded when he walked when he, uh, when, he, when he saw here the lamentation of cow and the bull he asked both of them he said I am here representative of uh, Krishna and Arjuna and uh, feel free to tell me why are you crying, both of you? Hmm? I am seeing that the uh, cow is crying and the bull has got his three legs broken. Huh? Now, who are you and why are you crying? Huh? What is the reason? Because if cows are not happy, nobody can be happy in society. Huh? So, of course, that, that section is a very important section which we will discuss another time. Hmm. Both of them refuse to tell the reason. Huh? Who is beating them? Because Kaliraj is just standing by the side, huh? a little distance away. Not dressed in blackish dress with a crown, you know, posing like a king. And Parishit could immediately estimate this person must have beaten this cow and bull. But still, the cow and bull don't tell him the reason. They say many reasons. Huh? Maybe it seems that our Swabhav itself is to lament. Uh, uh, why should we blame someone else? Huh? They are asking. Because when somebody hurts us, we generally pinpoint to them, this person has hurted me. Is it not true? But that person is only delivering results of my own karma. Hmm? Like that, they are, that, because of that, Shastra say that don't blame anyone. So the cow and the bull are not blaming the Kaliraj, uh, who was standing by the side. But the king, uh, Parikshit, he was very intelligent. He immediately understood. He said, just because Krishna and Arjuna have left the world, you rascal, you think you can do anything you want? Hmm? We are beating the cow uh, and the bull. Just wait and watch what I do. Immediately Parishit took out his sword uh, and was ready to behead Kali on the spot. And uh, and Kaliraj, he fell at the feet of uh, Parishit. And he said, my dear king, uh, probably you may be aware, my period has started now. Now this is Kali, Kali Yuga has started. Uh, because Krishna has gone back to his abode. Now this is the fourth age. And in this age, I am supposed to rule. So, of course, I was planning to come and meet you and request permission from you so that I can start my rule. <laughs> At the same time, I know that you won't permit me also. So, I was in a dilemma of what to do. So, I am, I am now wearing the dress of a king. Uh, although I know very well that you are a very mighty king, very powerful king, you won't let me rule so easily. And uh, now that I have surrendered to you, please don't kill me. See, kings in those days won't kill anyone who surrenders to them, bows to them. Hmm. Give me some place to live, huh? like that he was begging. And then, uh, Parishit Maharaj, uh, yeah, here it is said. Here it says, when the personality of Kali understood that king was willing to kill him, he at once abandoned the dress of the king under pressure of fear and completely surrendered to him, bowing his head. Maharaj Parikshit, who was qualified to accept surrender and worthy of being sung in history, he did not kill the poor surrendered and fallen Kali, but smiled compassionately, for he was kind to the poor. And then now king is speaking now. Uh, Rajo Vacha, the king is saying, We have inherited the fame of Arjuna. Therefore, since you have surrendered yourself with folded hands, you need not fear for your life. But you cannot remain in my kingdom, for you are the friend of religion. Hmm. 
If the personality of Kali, religion is allowed to act as a man god or an executive head, certainly religious principles like greed, falsehood, robbery, uh, all this treachery, misfortune, cheating, quarrel, vanity will abound. Uh, yeah. And that was the purport I was reading last time. The principles of religion, namely austerity, cleanliness, mercy and truthfulness, uh, may be followed by the followers of any faith. There is no need to turn from Hindu to Mohammedan or Christian or some other faith and thus become a renegade and not follow the principles of religion. The Bhagavatam religion urges following the principles of religion. The principles of religion are not the dogmas or, or regulative principles of a certain faith. Such relative principles may be different in terms of time and place concerned. But one has to see whether the aims of religion have been achieved. <coughs> what Prabhupada is saying, every religion emphasizes on these four principles. Hmm? What are they? Austerity, cleanliness, mercy and truthfulness. So he says that everyone should stick to this, huh? these four principles. Hmm. And then he is uh, telling, therefore Kali, uh, you do not deserve to remain in a place where experts perform sacrifices according to truth and religious principles for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord, Agnyeshwar. Uh, in all sacrificial ceremonies, uh, um, although sometimes a demigod is worshipped, the Supreme Lord is worshipped because He is the super soul of everyone and exists both inside and outside like the air. Thus it is only He who awards all welfare to the worshipper. Like that Parishit Maharaj told Kali that wherever people are doing the yajna for the age of Kali, what is it? What is yajna for the age of Kali? Huh? Uh, Sankirtan, chanting the holy name. Huh? He cannot live in those places, he says. And then Kali being ordered by Maharaj Parishit began to tremble in fear. Huh? Seeing Parishit uh, before him like Yamaraj ready to kill him, Kali spoke to the king as follows. Your Majesty, though I may live anywhere and everywhere under your order, I shall but see you with bows and arrows wherever I look. Hmm? Uh, oh, Chief Protectors of Religion, please fix some place for me where I can live permanently under the protection of your government. Huh? Like that he said. So Maharaj Parishad, thus petitioned by Kali, personality of Kali, gave him permission to reside in places where gambling, drinking, prostitution and animal slaughter were performed. Dyutam Panam Streha Suna Yatra Adharmas Chaturvida. This verse number is 117.38. Hmm. Allah, repeat this. Suta Ubacha Abhyartita Stada Tasmai Stana Ni Kalayeda Dau Dyutam Panam Streha Suna Yatra dharmas chatur vidaha Yatra dharmas chatur vidaha See here he is saying Abhyarstitas tadatas mai And thus petitioned by the Kali Sthanani kalaye dadav Means what? Four sthan he gave it to Kali In these four places you can live He said what are they? He says, what is dhyutam? Uh, dhyutam means gambling, yeah. Panam means panam, drinking liquor. Uh, striyaha means illicit association with women. And suna means animal slaughter, uh, killing of animals. Yatar adharmaha chatur vidaha, he says. Uh, wherever these are the four sinful activities he gave for the Kali to reside, he saying. In this way, Maharaj allotted Kali these four places. Now Kali, Kali told him, huh? he said, my dear king, you have given me four places which don't exist in your kingdom. Huh? Because you are such a great devotee of Krishna and you are a pure king, you just uh, don't let people do these uh, four nonsense things. Huh? Because of this, it seems you have tricked me because you have not given me any place as such. Hmm? You are driving me away completely. And then he said, punascha yacha manaya. Punascha means again he requested king. Huh? Jata Rupa Madat Prabhu. The personality of Kali asked for something more. Because of his begging, the king gave him permission to live where there is gold. Because wherever there is gold, there is also falsity, intoxication, lust, envy and enmity. Hmm. He says. 
Five things he is saying. Where there is gold, there is falsity, intoxication, lust, envy and enmity. He is saying. Hmm. This is verse number 11739. Huh? Madam, Kamam, Rajo, Vairam, Chapanchamam. Huh? Anrutam. Anrutam means untruth. Huh? <coughs> Anrutam, Madam, Kamam, Raja, and Vairam. He is saying. These five things exist where there is gold. Huh? Yeah. That's personality of Kali, uh, but the direction of Maharaj Parikshet was allowed to live in those five places. Hmm. Therefore, he is saying, this is a very important verse. Visheshato Dharma Shilo Raja Loka Patir Guru is saying. Therefore, whoever desires, any of us who desire progressive well being, what we should do, he says. Especially kings, religionists, public leaders, brahmanas, and sannyasis should never come in contact with the four above mentioned religious principles. He is saying, Visheshato Dharma Shilo, he is saying. Especially those who are religious people and who want to accept the post of leadership, uh, Raja, Loka, Patir, Guru, they should never come in contact with those four things, he is saying. What are the four things? Uh, meat eating, gambling, intoxication, illicit sex. These four things. If you are really serious. Somebody can read this purport? You have another mic, you have? Yeah. Yeah, please. Very important purpose, this one, yeah. yeah. The Brahmanas are the religious preceptors for all other castes, and the sannyasis are the spiritual masters for all the castes and orders of society. So also are the king and the public leaders who are responsible for the material welfare of all people. Now, which means, like in your class you have uh, monitors, you have, what do you call them? CR means class representative, yeah. And you also have one representative for the whole college also? <coughs> yeah? What do you call it? GS, GS means? General yeah, your general secretary. They are also leaders, you see. <laughs> These people are also leaders. Similarly, in sports, uh, for every team we have a <coughs> captain. The cricket team we have a captain. Football team we have a captain. Is it not true? So these are also leaders. And for the whole uh, college, there are uh, different departments. There is a Hachodi, head of the department. He is also a leader. Then there is a principal for the whole college. Hmm? So these are also counted as leaders. Huh? Anyone who is accepting the post of leader uh, is a leader. And similarly in society, sannyasis, uh, brahmacharis who are guiding many, many people. Huh? Similarly in a center like ours, boys, we have project manager, <coughs> we have preaching coordinator, we have internal manager, huh? the overall coordinator, we have project adv- uh, advisors. Huh? These are all leaders actually because a counselor, for example, hmm? These people have many followers. Many people look up to them like a leader. So all these people, again read from the beginning. Yeah. The Brahmanas are the religious preceptors for all other castes. And the Sannyasis are the spiritual masters for all the castes. Yeah, which means Brahmanas lead who? Chatriya Vaishya Shudra. But Sannyasis lead who? Brahmana Vaishya Chatriya Shudra. Brahmana Chatriya Vaishya Shudra plus uh, Brahmachari Grahastha Vanapras. All are guided by Sannyasis. So Sannyasis have to be completely spotless. Prabhupada says, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his entire life never committed a blunder any time. You cannot find one blemish in the life history of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Prabhupada says anybody who wants to become Brahmacharya Sannyasi, they have to live like that. Like Mahaprabhu, he says, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah. So also are the king and the public leaders who are responsible for the material welfare of all people. The Which means even MLAs, MPs, huh? chief ministers, you know, Prime Minister, all these people. But what do we find today? Like you see, one of the Maharashtrian politicians, I don't want to mention the name, I heard that he has usurped practically, they are saying, uh, 1,75,000 1, uh, crores. Huh? They are saying 1,75,000 crores or something like that, they had very big amount. Huh? Because of which uh, they have put him behind the bars. They are saying for his whole life he is going to be behind the bars, they are saying. Huh? Not only in Maharashtra, from South India also, one politician's daughter is behind the bars now. Huh? Because, because they were hoarding gold. Gold means money only, wealth. Huh? Because of hoarding gold, Kali entered his life. Now Kali is uh, putting him in the jail for whole life now. See? Huh? Because he was storing. And same way, Clinton, Bill Clinton, he fell prey to illicit relationship with a woman in the parliament in America, you see? Because of which uh, one becomes infamous. Huh? So we have to be very careful. You will find that in, in this age, anybody who gets 
carried away by like we often talk about internet pornography boy should not watch this is the main reason because kaliraj enters into your system like a virus yeah? and then he will dominate your head you will go mad hmm? see kaliraj is roaming around uh, searching for wherever these four places are there he wants to go and occupy that place if your head is having a desire to surf internet pornography kaliraj enters your head hmm? and that's it then it's like a virus once virus uh, enters into your computer what happens computer hangs you see like zamagindra swami came to pune hmm? he was he was telling your boy is a very intelligent boy very smart in studies hmm? very smart in doing everything very intelligent very thoughtful discriminating in everything once a woman comes into his life then he said our head is like a computer some nut gets loose he said <laughs> nut loose ho jate hain he said then he behaves like a crazy fellow huh? how a man behaves you know proper said man is good woman is good when they come together they are bad <laughs> he said then they become bad crazy fellow because kali enters that is why marriage is not prohibited but marriage is also religious if a man and woman marry and they beget children and they live within the sacred bubble of marriage that is not condemned but illicit sex is condemned proper say proper says you are afraid of marriage thinking that in a marriage means i have to give my wife a house and a bung and a bungalow car and uh, sari and ornaments and everything and she will uh, eat my head up uh, she will trouble me so much so i don't want to marry then it remain brahmachari hmm? <laughs> or you you want enjoyment okay you marry a woman no problem but to say i will not marry but i will enjoy without marriage that means you are a rascal is is proper sex huh? you see that is illicit sex then kali will enter your head and ruin your life huh? so that's why he is saying you know, go ahead the progressive religion is and those who are responsible human beings why the mic is not good this one pur 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 is coming huh? the progressive religion is and the those who are responsible human beings or those who do not want to spoil their valuable human life to refrain from all the principles of mm-hmm. the religiosity is especially illicit connection with human if a brahmana is not truthful all his claims as a brahmana at once become null and void if a sanyasi is illicitly connected with human all his claims as a sanyasi at once becomes false false similarly if the king and the public leader are unnecessarily proud or habituated to drinking and smoking certainly they become disqualified to discharge public welfare activities truthful is the basic principle for all religions the four leaders of the human society namely the sanyasis the brahmana the king and the public leader must be tested crucially by their character and qualification before one can be accepted accepted as a spiritual or material master of society he must be tested by the above mentioned criteria of character such public leaders may be less qualified in academic qualifications but it is necessarily primarily that they be free from the contamination of four disqualifications namely gambling drinking prostitution and animal slaughter mm, thank you see each of these qualities proper is connecting to one one person huh? see for example if somebody is a brahmana but if he tells lies what is it telling lies it's a subtle aspect of which quality hmm? gambling uh, subtle aspect of gambling is telling lies it's against truthfulness isn't it it's against truthfulness so leaders should never tell lies if if leaders tell lies um, then because of them their followers also eventually will catch up telling lies yata raja tata praja you see if a, if a senior if a senior devotee devotee tells lies and seeing him then the younger devotees also will start telling lies everybody huh? so but why do people tell lies do you know why do people tell lies yeah they want to hide their mistakes yeah they want to hide their mistakes why false ego one is a false ego you know they don't want to let the people other people know that they have committed a mistake because it makes them look like a fool you know so people hide yeah fear of losing post fear of losing position that's one reason also yeah people tell lies hmm? so a brahmana should be truthful huh? brahmana should never tell lies you all know there was one satyagama jabala one small boy he went to gurukula the guruji told him that i can't take you uh, in the gurukula unless i know uh, 
you know, from which type of family you come from. Eh? So he went back and asked his mother, my Guruji wants to know my father's name. His mother said, my dear boy, when I was a poor lady and uh, in those days, because of uh, in want of food and clothing and shelter, you know, I associated with many men who supported me and uh, you were born from one of those men. I don't even know who your father is, eh? she said. And the boy went to Gurukula and exactly told the truth. <laughs> to the teacher, Guru, Guru, Guru said, now you can join my Gurukul because you are a Brahmana. He said, you are so truthful, uh, pure. Uh, you are not duplicitous. You are very straightforward and pure. So, this is Brahmana. You see, Drishta, when Drishta Dhyumna went to Dronacharya to learn uh, archery, Dronacharya knew that this fellow will kill me in future, in the battle of Kurukshetra. Still, he gave him education. This is Brahmana, you see. Brahmana doesn't do Pakshapath at all. And he is equal to all. He is very liberal and he gives knowledge freely. He doesn't charge anything. Uh, so, one should be truthful. And then Prabhupada is saying a sannyasi should be clean. He is saying cleanliness for sannyasi. What is cleanliness for a sannyasi? A sannyasi should not be illicitly connected with women. Uh, then all his... If a Brahmana tells lies, will people put faith in Brahmanas? They won't. Similarly, if a Brahmacharya or a sannyasi, anybody wearing saffron means See, so even Saffron Brahmachari is also uh, seen as a Maharaja in India, generally. Hmm? People think if you wear, if you wear Saffron dress, people think that they don't know the difference between Sanyasi and Senior Brahmachari, uh, Saffron Brahmachari. People see almost same. So anybody wearing Saffron, eventually, of course it doesn't mean that if you're not wearing Saffron, you can have illicit connection or something. It's not like that. Hmm? But as one becomes, uh, uh, one become, uh, one is especially, of course, for those who want to wear white and get married and be like a grihastha, that is also allowed. Eh? That that kind of sanction is allowed. It's not that, it, uh, you know, it's a very wonderful thing, but it's like a concession that is given. Eh? If one wants to practice, within the religious principles, one wants to practice. But if a sannyasi, hmm, because sannyasi is seen as a leader, naturally many men, uh, women, children, other people in society, they go and bow down to sannyasi, they give him gifts. Uh, they give him garland, they give him worship. He is accepting all these things not for himself. He is accepting them on behalf of Parampara, on behalf of Krishna. Hmm? So sometimes a sannyasi, because of the uh, advantage he is getting, uh, he may uh, misuse his position. That's why he is saying if a sannyasi is illicitly connected with a woman, all his claims of sannyasi at once become false. Uh, he is saying. Which means sannyasi should be clean in habits and his main aspect of cleanliness is to avoid illicit sex completely. Hmm? No, actually a brahmachari sannyasi cannot have any private life. Brahmachari's life is like an open book. Hmm? Like you can see in our ashram, the door is open, you can come and see how we live our lives. Huh? We cannot have any private life. We cannot have a mobile which we say I cannot show to anybody. Hmm? Our mobile is a public property. Hmm? What SMS has come to you? Hmm? Who has called you? What names you have stored? In the mobile. Mm. Immediately. Mm. So, you know, like like one in one Brahmacharya's mobile. Actually, we certainly we have detectives who find out these things. In one Brahmacharya's mobile, there was some name, new sister. Mm. Immediately it was brought to the authorities. Prabhuji, some new sister is written. What is it? <laughs> then that Brahmacharya was called and interviewed and we made a phone call and found out. Actually, it is sister's number only, but sister's new number. <laughs> so, so, the idea is what? <coughs> Sadhus cannot have such connections, any connections with woman. Uh, of course, one can have connections with sister, mother, and of uh, course, has no daughter. Huh? Only sister and mother. <laughs> one can have connections with sister and mother. But the idea is why we are so strict about these things, because this is the, uh, you know, loophole for Kali Raj to enter, you see. So many of, so many devotees we have seen, you know, they came to four rounds, eight rounds, they got slapped by Kali Raj and carried away in the current of Maya. They are no more now, they are dead actually, in the spiritual life, they are gone now. So that is the reason, those who are alive, like all of you are alive now, for people who are alive, we tell these things very frankly. If you don't safeguard yourself, Kali will carry you. Uh, he'll put you in his pocket and take you, if you are not careful. Mm. That's why he's saying, 
A Brahmana should be truthful and sannyasi cannot be lessly connected to the woman, he is saying. And then he is telling, king or public leader should not be unnecessarily proud. Hmm. That is subtle thing. And the gross thing is, he should not be habituated to drinking and smoking. See, drinking undoubtedly makes one crazy. Is it not true? One loses control. How people, like I heard, one of the boys, he, he, was, uh, he drank liquor and he was driving a bike. And he became so foolish, he wanted to drive the bike in the, uh, <coughs> what do you call it, between two roads, there's a divider, no? Yeah, divider. Now, he was driving it in the divider. He wanted to show his friends how I can drive in the divider. I will not go left, I will not go right. <laughs> huh? He was going in the divider and uh, suddenly the, and he had put 800 cc, uh, this thing, motor, which is generally used in Maruti car. Some villagers do that, you know that? Because they want to go very fast. They put 800 cc motor. That goes extremely fast. So he was going. So the bike went ahead and he fell. Huh? Yeah. And because of that he hurt the bottom, which is the, the genitals portion. He got hurt. He was admitted in the hospital for weeks together. Now he has to pass urine from a tap. Whenever he wants to pass urine, he has to open a tap. <laughs> Separately. Yeah, they have put in college student, yeah. Because the gender, regular uh, genitals cannot pass water now. It's crazy, huh? Because this is intoxication, you see. They have to do operation and everything, big money also spent. Huh? Crazy. You see, you drink liquor, nowadays boy, college boys, girls, even girls are smoking and drinking nowadays. Huh? It's crazy, it intoxicates a person. It's a very gross way of becoming proud. Huh? Similarly, uh, uh, when you drink, a person thinks, I am like a palawan, although he is very skinny. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? One small child comes and gives him a slap, he fall on the ground. Hmm? But he thinks, I am very powerful, he thinks like that. That is why drinking makes one proud. And smoking also makes one proud. Hmm? How? Like in South India, people are so mad. This, uh, uh, this one actor, Rajini you know, in one of the movies, you know, he used to throw a cigarette. Like this. Catch like this. Hmm? After that, everybody started imitating everywhere. Hmm? You know, throw in some saucers and then catch it in the, and then hold it stylishly in the hand. Huh? And people when they see, when they see these things, they think, oh, you know, how can you spend, pass your youth away without, you know, showing some stylishness. And people feel like that. It makes one very proud. I look very smart when I hold a cigarette. Huh? Huh? So Prabhupada says, in the Vedic times, if somebody would want to smoke, you know, he'll be smoking in a little private place. And if some elderly people come, he'll immediately throw it. And he would, you know, wash his mouth because he will not want to insult any. Because he knows very well if an elderly person comes, he will come and give some sadhupadesh. Huh? He will say, hey, don't smoke tobacco. Huh? They will tell naturally. Don't smoke BD and all that. But nowadays, young boys smoke in the faces of people. Huh? <laughs> On the face. <laughs> you seen that? They don't care. Yeah. You see? Because they are very proud, you see. Smoking makes one very proud. Drinking also. But there are other things also which make us proud. Like he says, Janma Aishwarya Shruta Shri. Huh? If one has a high birth, one is born in a Brahmana family. Huh? Or he thinks, I am a great soul. Similarly, Aishwarya means, uh, you know, when one has bodily beauty or one has a lot of money, huh? the rich kids are very proud always. They go in big, big cars. Huh? And they eat out in hotels. And they drive the car madly. Huh? In this way, one can become very proud. Or if somebody is some kind of leader, he can become very proud also. King or a public leader. Like if you are captain of the team, huh? or if you are a class representative of a group of boys, or your college representative of something like that, general secretary. Hmm? Especially when you hold some post, some kind of pride also is associated with that. Hmm? But purpose is one should not become unnecessarily proud, he is saying. What is that pride opposite to? What is the pride opposite to? It's opposite to austerity. You know four things, no? Cleanliness. Now we talked about cleanliness for sannyasi and truthfulness for brahmana and austerity for kings. And what is austerity for kings? Three types of austerity we discussed last time, I think, correct? What is that? Anodvegakaram vakyam satyam prehitam chayat. We have to speak even though you may be a king. Like you may be a project manager, you are a project advisor, you are a president of a temple, you are a sannyasi, you, you are a leader, some public leader. You should speak in ways unagitating to people's minds. Anudveka karam bakyam satyam. Speak the truth. Huh? Priyam. Speak it sweetly. Huh? 
हितम दूसरों को हित करने वाली चीज बोलो स्पीक समथिंग दैट विल बेनिफिट द पीपल स्वाध्याय अभ्यसनम चाहिए बस स्टडी द शास्त्र नाइसली एंड स्पीक बेस्ड ऑन दैम डोंट स्पीक समथिंग ऑन योर ओन डोंट ब्लफ एनीथिंग सो दिस इज एक्चुअली द ऑस्ट्रिटी ऑफ स्पीच सिमिलरली दैट ऑस्ट्रिटी ऑफ बॉडी व्हाट इज ऑस्ट्रिटी ऑफ बॉडी एनीबडी नोस यस हो एक्चुअली ऑस्ट्रिटी दिस इज आल्सो ट्रू बट ऑस्ट्रिटी ऑफ बॉडी इज देव द्विज गुरु प्राज्ञम पूजन बॉविंग डाउन टू एल्डर्स लाइक पेरेंट्स और गुरु or lord huh? that is austerity of body how many of you feel lazy to bow down any of you nobody feels lazy very good that means you are already following the austerity of body huh? but sometimes some people are little lazy like once rom pad maharaj was telling he went to one temple one devotee saw maharaj said one chakal maharaj he was telling maharaj what is this new style huh? he asked this is one chakal like this that's what this is so only hand is doing obeisance Like this, the body is not doing. <laughs> you see, this laziness. Huh? Similarly, sometimes people, you know, uh, they bow half, half body. They bow like this, huh? or they bow with one hand or something or something like that. Laziness. So bowing down the body is what? Austerity of the body. Similarly, Brahmacharyam, what you said, that one controlling sex urge, is also austerity of the body. Hmm? Brahmacharyam, ahimsa. Ahimsa means not delighting in injuring others. Uh, with the body, you know, pinching others, or slapping others, or catching butterflies or dragonflies and all that, huh? hurting them, or not killing goats and chicken and all those things also. So, austerity means not hurting and injuring other living entities. Huh? So, this is all austerity of the body. So, somebody becomes a king, he may become proud. He may not bow down, isn't it? Like Indra didn't bow down when Brihaspati entered the court, huh? and he offended Brihaspati by not bowing down because he refused to perform the austerity of the body huh? so similarly when one becomes a king he may become very proud he may speak in insulting ways towards others hmm? he may criticize others he may taunt others huh? because king you have seen the vedic times also you see if a king wants somebody what he does he claps hands and immediately two people come isn't it people are at his beck and call people immediately salute isn't it huh? immediately they uh, and everybody is at his beck and call huh? and also this is true even for any leader of course you may not clap hands and call people now but people obey you correct when you become leader but somebody is made a temple president somebody is made a project manager or advisor or anything like that a big role counselor uh, or a college representative immediately people respect you uh, because everybody knows that you are holding a post and then you, they also know this fellow can admit people in this fellow can remove people uh, he is invest, invested with some powers But from a Vedic point of view, a king is God's representative, Naradev. We say, no, Naradev means he represents the Dev. Huh? In a human form, he is representing God. Huh? He is not God, but he is representing God. So we have to respect him as he would respect God. That is the understanding of the uh, Vedas. So he is respected, but he should not misuse that respect. Hmm? Just because you know. You know, somebody is uh, coming and bowing down to you. You cannot sit on their back huh? <laughs> and dance on their back, isn't it? <laughs> so just because somebody is obedient, you cannot become proud and arrogant in dealing with them, isn't it? Of course, a guru sometimes chastises the disciple. That is not called arrogance. Huh? That is done in order to uplift the disciple. If guru doesn't chastise the disciple, the disciple will go astray. Huh? He will go. He will become a victim of Maya. But otherwise, a king. Uh, for the king the austerity is prescribed hmm. and manaprasad saumyatam maunam atma vinigraha a king also should be satisfied uh, if a king wants to go on marrying more and more wives uh, you know then he will become more and more materialistic also hmm. sometimes in the vedic times the kings would marry more women more wives and that was allowed because the women population was very high at that time men population was less of course population was there but more men were becoming brahmacharis huh? and they would go to jungles and very in the early stage only they will go back home back to godhead very early hmm? and very few men were agreeing to marry so less men and more women so they were allowed to marry more wives of course they have to maintain the wives not not that you can use and throw them huh? they have to maintain them so but the king is not encouraged uh, to become uh, proud in the mind also manaprasada samyatvam a king should not be too greedy like alexander go on expanding my kingdom go on expanding expanding in such a way that 
Uh, just for the sake of showing off. Uh, our Yusuf Maharaj had the whole world uh, kingdom, but he was a very great devotee. Uh, he was using the whole world in Krishna's service. Otherwise, the king has no reason to be a king of the world. Uh, so, Manaprasada Samyatam, Maunam Atma Vinigra, a king should control his senses. Otherwise, in those days, if a king uh, was very powerful, the opposite king will use some Vishakanya uh, to you know, kill this king. That was another weapon they used. A very beautiful looking woman whose body is full of poison. You know, they will send her secretly to him and she will uh, have some love affair with the opposite king. And she will kiss him and embrace him and when she puts her saliva into his mouth, then she will die. Uh, the king will die because she has uh, a Vishakanya, you see. Because if king has sense control, Atma Vinigraha, then he will not die like that. Uh, he will always, always be very careful and cautious. So, similarly, like king will not eat anywhere and everywhere. Because if he eats anywhere and everywhere, somebody may put poison and kill him, op- opponents and all. So, the king should have sense control. Uh, also, Atma Vinigraha. Indriya Arte, uh, uh, Maunam, uh, what is it? Manaprasada Samyatvam, Maunam Atma Vinigraha, Bhava Samshuddhi Rityeta, Tapas Manasam Uchate. This is Tapas Manasam, uh, mental tapasya. Hmm? He should always be trying to purify his existence. A king should go to the temple in the morning, bow down to the Lord, uh, uh, see the darshan of the Lord. I go Ambarish Maharaj, isn't it? He was washing the temple. Uh, he was taking darshan of the deities. He used his leg to go to the temple and all that. So king should in this way perform all three austerities. Uh, king or anybody in the role of a leader should perform, he says. Uh-huh. And then Prabhupada says, the four leaders of human society, namely sannyasis, brahmanas, kings and public leader, must be tested crucially by their character and qualification. Now what is the one left now? And cleanliness for sannyasis, truthfulness for brahmanas, and uh, austerity for the uh, king and for the public leader, mercy. Isn't it? Mercy means um, one should not uh, be unnecessarily uh, cruel by uh, killing innocent creatures. Huh? Yeah. Like meat eating should be avoided. Nowadays, too many people eat meat nowadays. Huh? Everywhere. Huh? It has become a norm. That's why he's saying that one should. Uh, because if a public leader eats meat, he will develop cruelty. Huh? Before one can. Uh, purpose saying, uh, these four leaders of the human society, namely sannyasis, brahmana, king, and public leader, must be tested crucially by their character and qualification. Before one can be accepted as a spiritual or material master of society, he must be tested by the above mentioned criteria of character. Such public leaders may be less qualified in academic qualifications, but it is necessary primarily that they be free from the contamination of four disqualifications, namely gambling, drinking, prostitution, animal slaughter. Which means if you want to make somebody MLA or MP, we should test that they follow these four regulated principles. First, and then only uh, you should allow them to stand in election. But nowadays, you know, they check how much big mustache you have, uh, how many gundas are under you, hmm, and how many times you have gone into jail and come. Uh, and how you are, how they make sure that you should not have any degree also. You should be a literate, anguta chap. Uh, hmm. Then you can become a MLA, MP, leader, chief minister. How do you expect these people to rule the country? Just see. Hmm? You see, if somebody has always been doing Gundagiri all his life huh, and he has mis- mishandled, you know, in papers you find uh, even MLA, MP level people, you know, like uh, one fellow was killed by a woman hmm? just recently, a couple of months ago, one MLA. How he was killed, if you see, there is a background, nothing happens without a background. Because before he became MLA, he was exploiting a woman. Hmm? Uh, exploiting a woman many many times, he has abused her and she kept a vengeance. Later on, you know, when he became MLA, she became, her heart was burning. This fellow has abused me, he has raped me and now he is posing like a big leader. Hmm? She used some people to murder him, kill him. Huh? You see that, that's why if, if leaders don't follow these four principles, they will become victim of Kali, you see. Hmm? Why are we so strong about these four principles, this is the reason. If we, if we let these things, uh, um, after doing these things, what happened? Thereafter, the king re-established the lost legs of the bull 
mm. and by encouraging activities he sufficiently improved the conditions of earth mm. see papa is saying here in the purport by designating particular places for kaliraj maharaj parishad practically cheated kali he saying <laughs> cheated kali means what he drove him out practically from his kingdom huh? in the presence of kali dharma in the shape of bull and earth in the shape of cow he could actually estimate the general condition of his kingdom therefore he at once took proper steps to reestablish the legs of the bull namely austerity cleanliness mercy etc hmm? and for the general benefit of the people of the world he saw that the gold stock might be employed for stabilization gold is certainly a generator of falsity intoxication prostitution enmity violence etc but under the guidance of a proper king or public leader or a brahmana or sanyasi the same gold can be properly utilized to reestablish the lost legs of the bull uh, the personality of religion maharaj parikshit therefore like his grandfather arjuna collected all the illicit gold kept for the propensities of kali and employed it in the sankirtan yagna as per instruction of bhagavatam hmm. and the papa saying as we have suggested before once accumulated wealth may be divided into three parts for distribution namely 50% for the service of the lord 25% for family members and 25% for personal necessities spending 50% for the service of the lord or propagation of spiritual knowledge in society by the way of sankirtan yagna is the maximum display of human mercy people of the world are generally in darkness regarding spiritual knowledge especially in regard to devotional service of the lord and therefore to propagate systematic transcendental knowledge of devotional service is the greatest mercy and that one can show in this world when everyone is taught to sacrifice 50% of his accumulated gold for the lord's service certainly austerity cleanliness and mercy automatically ensue and thus the last three legs of the personality of religion are automatically established when there is sufficient austerity cleanliness mercy and truthfulness naturally mother earth is completely satisfied and there is very little chance for kali to infiltrate the structure of human society See, three times proper saying 50% 50% you will see in this <laughs> actually in uh, in proper's times proper in many of the lectures very frankly said that whatever salary you are earning 50% of your salary you should use it in krishna service <laughs> now when uh, after proper left the world in 1977 subsequently mm, some some devotees started gradually diluting this uh, and nowadays so uh, nowadays many devotees say you know why 50% per day 100% i'm using krishna service they say how in my home also there is altar you know i'm going in a car i'm a devotee going in car that is also you know krishna service only hmm? and I, we are cooking for our house members our mother father family members that is also krishna service huh? they say and also you know we go for yatras we need money that is also you know devotion service ultimately whatever i do everything it's like brahmarpanam brahmahavir brahmagno brahmana hutam brahmaivatena gandham brahma karma brahman going into brahman we say no yeah. everything is uh, for krishna only huh? people are saying but what prabhupada means here very clearly that for example somebody gets 50000 rupees huh? and uh, a person sets aside 25000 and uses it exclusively for krishna conscious activities for example you cook prasad weekly program you conduct in your house and you distribute prasad to people mm-hmm. you subsidize bhagavad gita and distribute it at a very cheap price huh? and uh, uh, go to the temple in the chowa temple you are getting nourishment from and there are brahmacharis sanyasis living there and also the deities are there we need to make dresses for the deities the ornaments for the deities huh? and uh, Um, bhoga for the deities and the uh, and temple maintenance and all these things so we give some portion of the money for the temple then keep some money for your yatras which is also it's purely krishna service because you are going for yatra to enhance your spiritual consciousness so if if you uh, if you are really a pakka devotee uh, the 50% of your salary should be you will you should be able to show and tally that it is used all for devotional activities it's not that you give 50% to the temple you may not be able to give 50% but it should be spent on devotional expenditure for example you make a marble altar in your house if you are a married man if you are a family so that is a devotional expenditure that is understandable hmm? say you uh, you know you you also decide that i will buy bhagavad gita from temple at full price and i'll make it into half price and i will sell it very easily 
to many people i buy it at 100 and sell it at 50 huh? so that many many people can take advantage of it or i'll give gifts of books to my colleagues huh? or i will i will make a policy every week i will hold a program in my house and uh, uh, cook prasad that may cost you something like say 10000 rupees it costs you monthly for example so this is purely devotional expenditure you are not uh, filling your belly with this huh? but you cannot include the money such as you cannot say you know we are cooking at home now that is also devotional expenditure you can't say even if you are karmi you will eat is it not true huh? everybody eats in this world you can't call it devotional expenditure all of you understand the difference so when you say 50 percent and like easy membership you are giving huh? that is also devotional expenditure because by your easy expenditure, I mean easy membership, you are also supporting your juniors. You become alumni of a college and then you support the preaching, hmm? like that. So, first of all, we should want to drive out Kali from the society. Hmm? And like one man, I remember one Mr. Rajesh Venkatesan from South India. He was living in Dubai. Somehow he got a copy of my EBG book. Hmm? So he wrote a long mail to me glorifying the book and everything. I immensely benefited from the book Prabhuji, you have published so well and I heard about your preaching, I want to support your preaching, you know, I heard many many youths are becoming devotees, and please tell me how can I send some money, so then I gave him an account and everything, thanking him, immediately within a week 1 lakh rupees he sent, huh? from Dubai, and then uh, again he said whenever you want any help you can ask me, so every year he was giving 1 lakh for subsidizing the books, for distributing the books, and uh, then he said I have come back to Chennai now, and now I may not be able to support you so much like before hmm? but uh, in future when I go back I will support then again he went to Dubai uh, in one stroke he gave 4 lakh rupees uh, in one stroke from Dubai and then he said now I am returning from Dubai so this is the last amount I am giving a big amount to you so 4 lakhs he had sent that time so, so you are selling that you are doing good work because you are calling the college students and saving them from all bad habits and teaching them these four principles, uh, living a pure life and uh, chanting the holy name uh, and becoming Krishna conscious. This, uh, he said this is very, very, very rare in this age. Nobody will encourage you to become a good boy. In fact, college, you will find many of your friends will tell you, Are you are a good boy, you are a very truthful person. As if you are a great soul. Come on, everybody is doing it. Correct? You will see that, yeah, everybody encourages you to do wrong things. This, Ma- this Maharaj used to say, Sab politician log bol rahe hain, hum narak jayenge hi jayenge. Lekin akele nahi jayenge, aap sabko leke jayenge. Lekin bhakta lo kya bol rahe hain? Hum bai kunta jayenge hi jayenge, lekin akele nahi jayenge, aap sabko leke jayenge. Devotees are determined actually, huh? Devotees know, Kali is in the wrong direction, it is degrading the whole world. Huh? But still devotees are preaching and devotees are trying to be, oh, you know, keep the people at the lotus feet of Krishna. And this promise is given in Srimad Bhagavatam. Allah repeat this verse. Kalau dosha nidhe rajan Astihye kaan mahan gunan Kirtanat eva krishnasya Mukta Sangha Param Brajet Mukta Sangha Param Brajet It says, Kaliyuga is an ocean of falls. Uh, wherever you turn around, you see people drinking, smoking, having illicit connection with women, uh, telling lies. Uh, there is bribery going on. Uh. You see, Anna Azari, how much is he struggling uh, to stop bribery? Uh. Uh, uh, he, was, he was fasting also. Uh. But actually, you cannot simply make people give up these uh, four things without giving them higher taste. Uh. Of Krishna consciousness. Unless people surrender to Krishna, they cannot give up. And when you surrender to Krishna, these things go away very easily. Hmm. If any boy says, I cannot follow these four principles, you have to check how much is he reading and chanting. Hmm. He is not hearing the lectures of Guru, he is not reading Bhaktivinoda Parapurcha Prabhupada. That's the reason one becomes weak. Anybody becomes weak, they are not taking. The Shavanam Kitanam is like eating grains. The grains give strength to your body. An Ekadeshi day, like today. You don't eat grains. You feel very weak. Huh? But tomorrow, the other day, people eat like anything. Huh? <laughs> Next day, isn't it? Then again, you feel very strong. But you know, when you don't eat grains, you feel very, very weak. Similarly, when you don't do Shavanam and Kirtanam properly, we feel weak. Hmm? So, through Shavanam and Kirtanam, get higher taste and we have to rise above these four things. That's why Prabhupada is saying this. Hmm. 
So that is why it is said, Prana ir artha ir diya vacha. You give your pran, become brahmachari, join the temple and preach. You know, go all over the world. Everybody is becoming engineer. Everybody has a wife and children, family. They have their car. They are going to company and coming. <laughs> now why should you? Why should we also flow with the same wind? That to be different. <laughs> join the ashram if you can. If you cannot do, then be such a grihastha who will devote sufficient money for propagating Krishna consciousness. Mm. And don't give money to people in whom you don't have trust. Give people, give those people the money. If you have faith in some devotees that they will uh, use the money for the right purpose, you give money to that particular temple, to those particular people. And make sure that the money that you are giving is used for this purpose. Sankirtan Yajna. That's what Par- Parikshit Maharaj did, you see. Then by doing that, then you will follow in the footsteps of Parikshit Maharaj. And then you are also contributing to driving out Kali. So the, all the easy devotees are contributing. They are all followers of Parikshit. Huh? Because they are contributing the wealth, huh? hard-earned wealth, for Krishna's service. Huh? Like we have, uh, of course, some boys when they hear about 50%, they become very frightened. But nobody gives 50% to the temple. Some devotees are giving uh, 10% of the salary. Some are giving. Hmm. Those who are giving 25% are people who are working abroad. They can afford to give 25%. Like if somebody is earning 1-1 one, one lakh every month in America, then he can give 25,000 rupees. Hmm. Still he can save a lot. Hmm. So that is why most of the diamond members who are giving 25% plus, they are people who are working abroad. In India, if you are working, you can give up to 15% or uh, very serious devotees, they give 20%. Hmm. And who are initiated or who are, uh, it's not that all initiated devotees give like that, but those who are really sincere and very serious, they give 20%. It requires a lot of courage to do that. Because, you know, of course nobody will become brahmachari so easily, but those who don't become brahmachari, for them to give money, is like cutting flesh and giving, like Shibhi Chakravarti. Hmm? Cutting flesh and giving. Because money is honey. Hmm. Very difficult. It is as good as life. That's why it is said, uh, uh, you were, you know, if you show a thousand rupee note, even a dead body will jump up. <laughs> so, everyone becomes attached to money. But if somebody can give that money to Krishna, huh, then you are really a great, great soul. Hmm? It requires great detachment to give. If one knows that, you know, what is his money? You know, at the time of death, all money will be left behind. I will go with an empty hand. Hmm? Instead of leaving behind the money, let me use it in Krishna's service. If somebody thinks he's a very fortunate soul. So the most fortunate Emperor Maharaj Parikshit, who was entrusted with the kingdom of Hastinapur by Maharaj Yudhishthir, when he desired to retire to the forest, is now ruling the world with great success due to his being glorified by the deeds of uh, kings of the Kuru dynasty, he says. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. In this way, uh, Parishit was very, very intelligent, intelligent king. He engaged her. Mm-hmm. You see, when we talk about these four uh, uh, principles, mm-hmm. uh, you, you all know this. What is opposite to truthfulness? Uh, gambling. What is opposite to cleanliness? Mm-hmm. And what is opposite uh, of uh, austerity? Intoxication. Intoxication. And what is the last one? What is the opposite of mercy? Meditating. Yeah. So these four principles have to be followed strictly. In meditating, I uh, already told you, fish, meat or eggs. Huh? We should give up. Uh, that is a gross one. And the subtle aspect of uh, meditating is what? Uh, meditating uh, means it's against uh, mercy and compassion. Isn't it? So... Uh, injuring others uh, in any respect uh, is considered meditating. Then, what is the other one? Uh, gambling against truthfulness. Uh, subtle aspect of gambling is speculating. Uh, speculating, speculation is also considered gambling. Uh, so, similarly we have the third one, uh, meditating, gambling, intoxication. Uh, so, we were talking about the king should not become proud. That is subtle intoxication. Hmm? Grass intoxication is drinking and smoking. That is grass intoxication. Uh, and similarly, opposite of cleanliness is illicit sex. No sex before marriage and no sex outside marriage. Hmm? One should give up. Now, 
Uh, we would like to discuss one or two just important points in this uh, three things. Now some people, some boys say that Prabhuji, if I, you know, I don't want to go behind a woman, but if a woman comes behind me, <laughs> am I wrong? Uh, some people ask like that. Uh, so, any of you, what will you tell a boy? Uh, if a boy says, you know, I am not behind a woman, women are behind me. Say, boy has a handsome body, some women are behind you. What will you tell? Yeah? Is it all right? Is it illicit sex or not illicit sex? Like, uh, uh, like a Okay. Similarly, one becomes contaminated. That's a point. <laughs> See, yeah, that is true. If a, if a, actually Shastra say man's body is made for self-realization, and woman's body is made for distracting the man from the path of self-realization. So, woman, in general, are considered less discriminative. Hmm? They are dis- less discriminative. If a boy comes in a very big car, a woman will get bewildered. Hey, just see, wow, what a big car. <laughs> Maybe he's a rich boy. Then a woman tries to you know, have some affair with him so that he can marry, marry, she can marry him. Later on she comes to know he brought the car in rent or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so women, get, women are very gullible in this respect. Women are very insecure. See, to feel secure, women sometimes want to have affairs with women. They become coquettish. Huh? They talk to, go and talk to a woman and uh, keep in touch with a man. I mean, women keep in touch with men. But sometimes uh, um, the men mishandle a woman or women mishandle, seduces a man. Either of them can seduce each other. They can become contaminated. So, anybody who becomes a party to it becomes contaminated. Huh? <clears throat> but remember one thing. Uh, if somebody says sex is natural, why can't we do it? Then baby birth is also natural. Is it not? Then you should allow the baby to come. Hmm? But that they don't want. Hmm? Then that they want to curtail. You see? In the, in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, one purport, uh, proper disciples, Hridayana Maharaj writes, he says, you, may, you, you are saying sex is natural, but the uh, contraceptives or condoms are not grown on trees. He says. Hmm? Why he says that? That is not natural, he says. Hmm? You understand what he means by this? It's a very deep sentence. Huh? These contraceptives are not grown on trees, he says. Which means, why then if it is natural, then let it be natural, then why are you using those things? Huh? Is it very natural to use such things? Like uh, using such kind of things in order to want to, en- want to enjoy sex, but at the same time not get AIDS. Huh? Or want to enjoy sex, but not beget children. Abort the child, kill the child in the womb. Hmm? So, a boy may be thinking that, you know, I, am, I have a handsome body, so many women are behind me. Yes, he may enjoy with different women and get AIDS and die. Or if he doesn't get AIDS also, he may liberally engage his body in doing nonsense things, then the child will come, when the woman will abort the child. When she aborts the child, both the living entities get karma. Both the boy and the girl. They both have to get terrible karma. They have to be killed. Because they are killing a child, they have to be killed. Next life he will die in a car accident or something, in the road, middle of the road he will die. He will say, huh? he will be ridden, you know, driven over by a car or something like that. Huh? One will be terribly dying. So, that is the Shastra say that, you know, one should, uh, uh, one should be cautious not to uh, be loose with woman. It begins with a handshake and ends with abortion. <laughs> you see? That is why, now all of you are young boys, you are studying in a college now, but by the time you pass out and go to a company, huh? You can, you can be a man of principles. He may say, Prabhuji, what to do, you know, in my, in the same team, uh, they have put me in a, a group where there are three girls and two boys. You know, we have to work with them, they want to shake hand with me every day. You know, because they want to shake, I shake. Yes, of course, it, <coughs> you know, this, this is a question for many devotees. If you are a very strict and serious devotee, no woman will come near you. Generally, women don't, uh, you know, dally with men who are very strict. Uh, even if a woman says he's kadus, no problem. Uh, you are very fortunate, a woman gives you a certificate like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> because there, there are boys who, are, who, you know, like this dog, you know, shedding the saliva from the mouth. Uh, bah, 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 it, it. Similarly, there are some boys who always talk very sweetly with women. 
on one hand women say hey this will always take talks very sweetly they like him and they loot his pocket also and they will go and tell every other girl you know this is a dog practically he is behind me huh? they will say like that and so many boys are like that like dogs huh? so men should men should have some dignity huh? because men is supposed to practice spiritual life strictly huh? and we one should not become a, a victim of the uh, opposite sex so he is saying here hmm, when one engages in sex he becomes more solidly anchored to the bodily concept of life hmm. being the most potent form of sense gratification sex has the greatest potency for hindering spiritual advancement and krishna is also saying lust is the greatest enemy of the living entity it is lust only which induces the pure living entity to remain entangled in this world hmm. he is saying it is very true as he says here the bodily consciousness becomes more like you see a boy may be wearing dhoti kurta here living a very simple life in the voice but as soon as a woman comes immediately the boy will start checking whether my shirt is tucked in properly and you know everything is proper <laughs> now that you have seen that huh? as soon as a woman comes immediately boy becomes conscious of his dressing how many of you agree you have seen that yeah you will see that why because that is a proof that your bodily consciousness is increased Huh? Even by coming of a woman, you can imagine huh? if one associates with a woman closely. Actually, why do boys want to dress very smartly? What is the reason? To impress. Huh? to impress the opposite sex. That's one of the main reasons. Yeah, that's the main reason. Why do women want to expose most part of their body? To agitate. To agitate the man. When, like they say, you know, provoke. Huh? They put advertisement. You have seen provoke. Provoke means you know. If a woman sees that even a very intelligent boy in the class looks na, like this in his looking way, eh? he becomes bewildered. Then the woman will go and tell other girls, "Hey, look at this fellow. He looks like a fool looking at me." Huh? That's what they want. They want to provoke. Everybody in this world wants to impress one another, like that. But if you don't want to increase your bodily consciousness, what will happen if you increase the bodily concept of life? What will happen? Huh? I will get entangled. Huh? You will lose taste for spiritual life. Huh? and then you will become more and more degraded we become like dogs practically you know but if one is very uh, so he is saying here then of course so he is saying sex isn't all it's cracked up to be hmm? materialistic society glorifies sex through its popular idols and advertising while it plays down the obvious drawbacks devotees like to remain conscious of the drawbacks and glorify the saints who exercise self restraint Hmm. materialists project the idea that sex makes you happy if this were true then prostitutes would be the happiest people in the world hmm. isn't it consider all the problems related to unrestrained sexual conduct and the benefits of celibacy and vedic marriage then he is asking think of all the suffering that can be related to sex for individuals and society and what is the true value of pleasure one gains hmm. and compare it to spiritual life so one should think about this as he says here like they show i have seen this in, in tv sometimes they show this advertisement you know one boy is feeling very shy to go to a shop and buy contraceptive you know he is feeling little shy he is thinking whether anybody is watching me and all you know and he goes and he goes back he doesn't buy another fellow comes you know very very you know talk 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 he is walking with a show suit with a big box of t-shirt and he comes to shop and says you know give me some moods you know some uh contraceptive you know, for uh, engaging in sex with a man and he is shown as a very bold fellow you understand no and by this what are they promoting no. what are they saying no. yeah if you are afraid of having girlfriends you know and keeping distance from a woman you are a coward no. and then if you buy this contraceptive and engage in sex with a woman then you are a very courageous fellow yeah. that this is what he is saying this is what the advertisement show like in america the cigarette you know when they show you know one boy is smoking and then they put statutory warning you know smoking causes uh, you know in, is injurious to health you know like that they put and then at the end this boy says who cares you know you have seen the redesman they say who cares that's a, so all people carry that word only in their mind last thing who cares but you know very well by smoking how people's lungs are spoiled how people get cancer that thing is never spoken about you see similarly the ill effects of sex like sexually transmitted diseases huh? like the not only the aids apart from that there is gonorrhea syphilis and so many other deadly diseases huh? and abortion and all these things 
and a person becomes disoriented he loses his academics nobody talks about that so the advertisements always cheat the public hmm. yeah so then he is giving some uh, and then he is giving some solution here how to keep sexual urges under control huh? first is quoting from the noi the bodily demands begin with the tongue if one can restrain the demands of the tongue by limiting the activities to eating only prasadam then the urges of the belly and genitals can be automatically controlled eat moderately at regulated times and keep a balanced diet for good health eating for sense gratification at any time the tongue urges you uh, and it agitates the senses so of course you can read the third chapter of bhagavad gita last part last 10 15 verses it's on last lot of solutions propel gives even chapter 2 chapter 3 chapter 4 in bhagavad gita has lot about senses mind huh? and it and third chapter last section talks about lust directly hmm? krishna says it's a very greatest enemy other things i am not talking much because gambling and other things although it is given in great detail here it's not relevant to indian boys huh? any of the indian boys see so even all this in- included like you know <coughs> dice game lotteries bingo mm, sports wagers mm, you know all these gambling games where you keep money because m- big money without any hard work is very dangerous because you make big money and you lose big money huh? like that mm. so i am not talking about the other things much huh? similarly intoxication he has written very elaborate material here i am not talking about that because it's not very uh, in india people follow many of these principles i i was emphasizing on illicit sex because this is one thing even boys with character can fall into huh? even boys <coughs> this is one weakness even good boys coming from good families can also become victim to after this four things meat eating gambling intoxication illicit sex it is said illicit sex you can avoid only if you have love for guru huh? love for those who are uh, bringing up in spiritual life if you don't have a deep sense of love and respect for them you will never be able to overcome this the other three are very easy huh? because in a, in a grass way subtle way one gets ca- captured by this huh? and uh, <coughs> and one edward somebody what is asked about bodily attachment how we can uh, um, check our bodily attachments see krishna consciousness is a solution and there are many things that you do in this like reading chanting morning program but one more thing i can tell you is don't make your position vulnerable like you know this tortoise you know whenever enemy comes what he does he shows the back and you beat with a stick or something nothing will happen but imagine if the tortoise is extending his head outside and somebody hits on his head or he extends his arms outside hmm? so these are very vulnerable portions similarly if you strictly follow the four regulatory principles in you know, a maya cannot you know the kaliraj cannot enter into your system uh, you are very safe and protected that's why we are, we took this session elaborately it's very very important but i find that even some of our boys in leadership positions sometimes they become careless huh? like one boy wrote to me in one of the voice is just recently uh, prabhu ji i am a preaching coordinator in a voice what is the meaning of preaching coordinator that means you are coordinating preaching of the whole center huh? and he is saying that uh, um, prabhu ji i i thought i'll directly write this letter to you you know i have been watching pornography uh, sites and all uh, so i don't know what kind of uh, punishment i should accept so you can kindly tell me whatever you say i will do huh? but it was like very much my conscience was hurting me so i am writing to you so then i, I just wrote a two line letter back to him i asked him uh, how many times you accessed such sites and for how much duration why i asked this question <coughs> if you entertain maya every by every one of us we face maya you know when you are going coming walking you see posters you see billboards you hear cinema music you know sights and sounds you know? these are the two prominent ones we are bombarded by them so impurities can enter into our system but how long you entertain them is very important you know? the more you entertain them for a longer time then we become victims we become more and more vulnerable you understand no so i asked him these two questions how many times you accessed and for how much duration 
you know what he wrote back he said you know innumerable number of times and for indefinite period of time he wrote then i immediately wrote back to him you get down from your post hmm? because you have been accessing again and again several times you are unfit to be in the post huh? and then go to your uh, run to your council immediately i told him hmm? go and take some sections of the scriptures to read and do some menial services work hard you know dispute proper books and uh, and come to temple and stay in the temple for some time associate more with the seniors travel with them i said you are not in a position to give anyone krishna consciousness first you mend yourself hmm? physician heal thyself i said now first you mend yourself i said i was happy that at least he wrote to me but there are fools who are holding post and they break the laws but they keep quiet because they are afraid they will lose the post hmm? that is even even more degraded <laughs> and there are even greater fools whom you capture them and tell them that you are detected you are found that your mobile has got the internet surfing you have done a wrong thing huh? with your mobile or with the computer and you remove from the post they become angry for being removed <laughs> that is even more worse is it not true you should be ashamed of holding the post you should resign from a post if you do such wrong things so similarly when you when you go home your old friends your boyfriend girlfriends all these people may come back to you or if any of you have been drinking before if you have been smoking before if you have been eating meat before hmm, and you can read more notes and understand more about those things so that you will not become a victim of these four things meat eating gambling intoxication and illicit sex these four things and uh, although i told you sanyasi should be clean and brahmana should be truthful and, uh, and king should be austere and a public leader should be compassionate and merciful all the four apply to all the four categories but prominent ones are mentioned but all the four apply to all the four categories <laughs> we have to follow them and we have to safeguard them safeguard ourselves and uh, we have to become followers of parikshit you see how parikshit completely kept kaliraj in bay huh? so our voice also uh, we are trying to keep these four activities out so that you know kali cannot even enter inside mm-hmm. and you can be so happy you can experience the joy of spiritual world right here hmm? if you lead a clean life and you see any boy who is not happy you will find he is breaking one of this four i can write a bond and give you hmm? surely why a person becomes morose is breaking one of this four this is one reason i always stress on these things hmm? otherwise you know uh, if somebody is living like an innocent child you know, chanting dancing studying preaching doing all the duties given huh? along with following the four rigs strictly he has to be a happy person in this world hmm? that's why parikshit did not become envious of kali nan udveshti kalim rajan it is said why because kushalani ashu siddhyante na itarani kritani yat so when kali when parikshit went around he saw some people were actually thinking of bad things but he, he didn't worry about it because if you think bad in kali yuga you are not punished hmm? but if you act bad immediately it's taken into your account Hmm. on the other hand good activities if you by if you think about them it is equal to doing them can you imagine like uh, vasudev is thinking of giving cows in charity and krishna's birth it's equal to doing it like that so kushalani ashu siddhante na itarani krutani at the decide so he was very happy uh, our parikshit although my populace has got some mental uh, in mental impurities still they will not act by breaking these four principles in that way he protected all his praja and kept kaliraj out of his kingdom completely till he was in the planet now that uh, parishit passed away kali has again entered into his society and then you know all over there was degradation in fact yushu maharaj observed the symptoms of kali brother and brother were fighting for land one brother was cutting another fell another brother's hand one fellow was cutting his leg hmm? they were fighting with one another hmm? similarly husband wife were divorcing each other father and son were quarreling with each other huh? the cows were very skinny and not giving any milk huh? the sky was making dub 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 sounds but no rains at all and the lakes were all dried up completely everywhere there was akal huh? so this is was this was the condition of uh, society when kali kali yuga began you and we are also living in kali yuga now we should not be born again huh? we should go back to godhead once and for all so that we will not have to see the harsh uh, futures of kali in the years to come which is explained in the 12th canto of shrimad bhagavatam kantra shrimad bhagavatam ki 
और भक्त बंद की एक्चुअली आर चैंटिंग होली नेम नाम संकीर्तन ड्राइव सवे कली यू नो दैट सॉन्ग कलीर कुकुर कलियुग पावन कलि भय नाशन श्री सचिनंदन गाओ रे सो दैट सॉन्ग से हाउ बाई डूइंग द नाम संकीर्तन यू कैन ड्राइव अवे कली Thank you very much Hare Krishna